Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Five Idiots Talking Toys. Thanks for joining us tonight. We are going to talk about the condition of collectibles, the things to look for when you're adding to your collection, when you're looking at figures. Um, between the five of us, we're just going to cover some things that we've noticed are worthwhile looking for, some of the things that we can point out to you so that you will be uh, armed with the knowledge to pick out a nice quality collectible for yourself. John, I'm going to throw it over to you. Uh, let's start off with um, anything that you've added to the collection this week, anything that you've noticed that you've been looking for for the quality of the things that you get? Hey, Shane. Yeah, um, I haven't really gotten a whole lot this week, but um, I did get a couple of last 17 figures, um, and I got a broad. And speaking of condition, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. Nice little backpack there no rubs on the backpack but there is some discoloration between the waist and the the torso and the uh, legs there but yeah i got a barada and a, a monomon and uh but yeah um nothing really majorly new to the collection or anything um but i think we'd we'd all talked about this before where uh, you know it'd be nice to give some tips on what to look for um what is typically uh damaged on a figure and what figure has the typical damage like earlier we we're talking about like if i said uh like charles said earlier before we got on the air um if he said jedi luke what's the first thing you think about with jedi luke as far as condition issues definitely the nose right uh you're looking at the tip of the nose because I personally, uh, I have one in a baggie. I'm not sure if it's an authentic baggie, but I've also seen them uh, mint on card. That nose even gets rubbed before it's even opened, right? I mean, it can bop around inside the bubble a little bit, and that nose can get rubbed even when it's brand new. So that's the first thing I look for. There's something about figures, and especially if you buy them for a mint on card, every mint on card you get, you're not guaranteed to get a mint figure, even if it does pop through the bubble and you take it out. Uh, it's not guaranteed to be mint because when they were making these figures and they were manufacturing them, they would put them all in a giant bin together. And that's where you get the, the majority of the defects uh, right off the bat before they even got put in the on card. So just because you're getting a mint on card doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a, a mint figure in there. And Shane's right with the, the nose rub. Um, depending on how the figure was placed in the plastic the plastic sometimes wasn't big enough for those figures and the the longer kenner produced the figures through the line they got smart on how they were packaging them so that way they weren't uh, rubbing as bad by putting the plastic insert and stuff uh in with the figure as well but you know the same thing with the gamorian guard the 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 uh, horns rub on the plastic before you even get out of out of the package um so yeah those are definitely things to look for yeah, the, the gamorian guard horns are, are always an issue did you guys see the photo that went around in some of the groups just a day or two ago that old time photo from like the late 70s maybe 1980 of the uh, factory in hong kong uh with the the lady factory workers putting the pieces the, the figures they together the big, baskets, they the big baskets full of figures just piled in there Right, right. And you think of, I don't know how it works in a factory these days, you know, with 2021 figures, but I always picture, you know, some sort of automa automated uh, method to put these figures together. And to, so to see them being put together by hand and then whatever that process was, and, and we know they were, um, you know, painted, there were parts of it that were painted, but it really opened my eyes to the fact that, like Brandon said, there were piles of figure parts, you know, on desks or counters in front of these workers, and they're piecing it together by hand. And you know, probably throwing it in a bin. So I think we've all, you know, seen a brand new figure that is not mint, even though it, you know, is coming out of a package and falling out of a bubble or something. Yeah, like Brandon was talking about earlier, with a, especially like with the, a lot of the Letty mocks. Um, I got a beater mock. Um, I got a, what was it, a pop blue? And uh, they have a hole in the back. Uh, a lot of those Return of the Jedi Letty mocks have a hole right in the back and that allows a lot of stuff to get in there. You know, you can get mildew and mold and just dirt and smoke and whatever. And uh, I got the figure because it was a good price and the card was all beat up. So I knew I was going to take it off the card. 
and I took it off the card and there was like black stuff all over the back of his hood. Um, it should be easy, pretty easily cleaned up, but um, that's another thing you have to look out for too. If you're buying, you know, a beat card just to get the figure, get a mint figure, uh, especially if it's a Letty or if it was made in Mexico, um, they typically put a hole in the back of the figure or in the back of the card right behind the figure. Now, John, why did they do that? That I don't know. I don't know, but I've had several Letty's, um, Letty carded figures that had a hole, like just a pinhole in the back. So I'll see if I can find that card. Chris is going to tell us about the hole in the back. The holes were by design, right? It's by design. It was factory punched. It was to let air into the bubble to supposedly like let the figure breathe. And that's why you never see any of those bubbles turn yellow. Um, it might not have been a good idea 40 years later because the figure, you know, can get dirty letting stuff in. But I think that was the whole uh, concept of the idea when they did it. Okay, so let me ask a question. If okay. you're looking at an uh, ATST driver, like a figure, and you want to know if it's in good condition or not, what are you looking for in that figure, you know? Mainly, I, I, boot rubs, um, emblem rubs. And, belt rub. Uh, belt rub as well. Belt rubs. Discoloration. Yeah, yeah. discoloration, yeah. What were you going to say, Chris? For whatever reason, he's starting to discolor also on his torso a little bit. So you see a little of them with like a slight discolor. But mo you know, mostly it's the, um, it's the, shul the shoulder emblems. They're, they're all rubbed out. Yeah, and that's the same with like the AT-AT uh, -AT driver. Yep. Um, and the apparel gunner. Not the AT-AT, the -AT, yeah. And uh, the emblems on his head. And a butt rub. Which figures do you guys notice are the most, or are getting to be the most discolored as far as torsos and other appendages? I'm Luke Hoth. Luke Hoth, yeah. He Luke, gets brown. Luke yeah. Bestman. Luke Bestman is, that goes back to us talking about the mint on cards with the figures not being perfect. Like that, car, like that figure goes in the bubble. And when you grade it, he gets graded like an 80 figure all day long, even though he's never came out of the bubble because he just discolors all the time. Uh, yeah. Green snag. <laughs> green snag. <laughs> yeah. The green snag, those are my favorite. Those, those, uh, those turn green and they turn brittle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They actually like break and fall apart. It's like China glass almost. I wonder why that one, that one figure is so susceptible to that kind of thing. And something like Greedo, which is basically the same, you know, it's a solid mold um, or uh, Hammerhead or any of those figures that were produced in the same, you know, even in the same play set that were released in the same play set. I wonder why that one has so much trouble. And then the other ones, are, you know, you can't sell for $4. I have no idea if you know for that one either. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, that's just this is crazy. I can't, but it's it's weird how it's only that figure seems to like crack like glass. Always, you always see it breaking and falling apart in pieces. Well, did you see that picture that Peter Bug posted last year um, of his snaggletooth that fell off the shelf and it was in a thousand pieces? Uh -oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that, so was, that was his. Yeah. I wonder off. if they discovered the something about that before they made the red snaggle tooth. Maybe they used a different plastic. Maybe they knew there was something wrong there one way or the other, whether it was discoloration or uh, it was fragile. I don't know, because it doesn't happen with, with the red. What Maybe. I heard, uh, the Kenner factory put a factory punch hole on the back and not the levy. So that's what <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that? What, did you work for Kenner or something? <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe that's a, that's a question we can ask a future guest. Sometime if we ever have one on that uh, is more knowledgeable about uh, Kenner production than we are. Um, also, the last 17 Ewoks. Lumat, yeah. Warhawk, oh. both. It's hard to find. Hard all to find. Yeah. 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 Lumat's are all yellow. Everyone.
Yeah, like when Chris puts up like 17 Lumats for sale at the same time, <laughs> like at least half of them are discolored. <laughs> when I actually when I actually look at it, all I see is 109, 109, 109. Once one is more than 109, I'm like, that was not yellow. <laughs> yeah, as soon as you see 114, you know it's uh, like a, a near mint plus. Yeah. NM plus plus plus. Well, I was holding this guy because uh, to me, uh, this is the number one figure that has paint rubs to me. I mean, it's one of the oldest figures. Um, it does discolor sometimes as well, but you've got you've got paint rub possibilities all over this figure. The hands, um, the boots, of course, but most you know most typical is the the straps, right? The the, the harness, and uh, not to give you the the ass shot but always down here always in the bottom here i saw a figure somebody was selling a, a mint on card recently and i he had put up some good photos some really cl nice close-ups <clears throat> and i was looking at the figure through the bubble and it had paint rubs all over the crotchal region right here so you know it's from the factory it's got to be because it's that's not the kind of rub you would get from from bouncing around inside the bubble so this is a hard one to get really yep. really mint uh, usually uh, right on the back also. All yeah, the yeah, the, the, uh, the uh, white on the off. back. Yeah. Yeah. Bosk is the same way. Bosk. Yeah. Yep. And then with the same new time. Mando show coming out, you know, I think that figure is just going to skyrocket, especially the real nice ones. Yeah, Brandon has a, uh, a drawer of his desk <laughs> full of Bosks. He's pumping them hard this fall. <laughs> When Christmas go, comes, he's taking his family on vacation on Boss. Are they going to go up from like $20 to 24 It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. He's not going to go up a lot just because his uh, rifle is not worth a lot of money. It's like seven, eight, nine dollars That's all it's worth. Yeah. I mean, I'll pay up for a nice uh, Boss with no rub on the, on the white, you know. I still need one myself. I can't they're, find yeah, them. They're... I've got about four of them that look pretty good. I've yeah. just been hoarding them. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a couple of good ones. Uh, I've sold. I mean, this one's got a you know a couple of nicks on it. Um, but but also the the other thing with this figure is the the limbs are get faded yellow a lot. And I was looking into that not that long ago, maybe a month ago. And it definitely has to do with what factory they came from. From what I found, um, that. Uh, the version where the the limbs are almost like an off white, like a beige color, was I don't remember what factory it was was from, but a specific factory where there was there was ones from other factories that not, nice Jay? and bright yellow. <laughs> Is there a point? I honestly don't. There's discoloration on figures that I honestly don't mind, and that's probably one of them because it doesn't detract from the figure. It still kind of looks like it's part of the uniform. Yeah, I mean, I, I have I have a couple others sitting here. I mean, this one's got some nicks in the back, you know. But it's not discolored. But it's not discolored, right? Like, see the difference? It's a huge difference. And I mean, I just think this looks, you know, ugly. It, it looks like it was out in the sun. But I'll do seven dollars. The one on the left. <laughs> fourteen. Oh, he's, going, 14 he's going up. Fourteen. He's going up to ten dollars. We I was going to be 15, but you already took 14. <laughs> you can also talk about the Death Star droid. Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. Shocking. Yeah, I have one of those sitting right here. Or I had one. Let me see. Who's got – Do you time. have a high-grade Death Star droid? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I have uh, I have an 85, but then I have a baggie of him. That's a, that's a 90. Now, but how, how does that figure look? It looks is good. It, is it really nice, or can you tell there's some scratches on there? He's actually no. He's actually really nice. The only thing, obviously, I can't tell are his limbs, which is always a problem, also. But no, he's he looks really nice. But if you like, when you look at graded pieces of a Death Star droid, you mainly only see them like 80 and below. You don't see a lot of 85s out there. They're like really hard to get. I, I have a fairly nice one right here. Now. I don't. I don't think it's mint, but in terms of the the helmet and the belt, um, you know, well, bigger. Oh, what did you say? I'm sorry. The, <laughs> that's the droid. The droid. Oh, droid. I think you said Death Star Commander. 
I have one at uh, CAS right yeah, now. Yeah, Death Star Droid. It's going to be good. There's a pretty nice Death Star Droid. Yeah, that's that's nicer than what I got. I got a scratch on mine for sure. A couple of them. There's a little scratching right there on the front, maybe. But so after sending in just hundreds of things, CAS, you know, looks at the paint and everything, but uh, they also look at the limbs also. In, the, in terms of the tightness, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, if they like, if you send something in that's like never moved before, and the paint is like, eh, you know, you know, like not really great, you'll still get like a really good like grade on it. I don't know how they rank it or rate it or, but well, the black like paint, that. the black paint on those is tough. On the face, yeah, yeah, and on the on the shoulders. I mean, and... I've I've got I've got three or four of them here right now, and I mean they're just these are some of the better ones that I've come across, and there's still there's plenty of paint missing. The nicest one I have, you know, even has a scratch on it. Um, and then the one that was sharpied. Yeah, yeah, I, I bought one. This is this is one figure that I was looking around for at um, ICC Con, um, just because mine, you know, I didn't have, I had one that was beat to hell, and uh, I kept looking. For, I think I bought three of them. I tried to find a nicer one, a nicer one, and then I bought one that was just in the lobby sale. Uh, I didn't have Brandon by my side with his uh, spotlight. And uh, I got back to some locale in the hotel where there was actually some light. And I looked at this the damn thing, and it was like clear as day that somebody just took a Sharpie to it. I just couldn't see in the corner that I was buying it in. And a guy took it back. It wasn't, it wasn't a big deal, but. Do you want to name drop? No, it's not. he was nice about it. It's not necessary because he was nice about it. And uh, you returned it? I did. I mean. <coughs> Right, John? You said you. I think John even told me. He's like, "Go bring that back. That's ridiculous." Yeah, I don't uh, know if that was me. It sounds that sounds like a Chris thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember coming back to you because you know where we were posted up in the lobby. Oh yeah, yeah. And I remember yeah. coming back to you because <laughs> we don't have to put that. We don't have to put that in the episode. <laughs> So anyway, John, no, I think it was you because I came back over to where you and I were posted up near the uh, the center of the lobby, and uh, he was kind of back in the corner. And as soon as I got back to where we were, uh, you could tell right away, you're like, yeah, that's a marker. That's Sharpie. Um, and he was nice about it. He threw, he'll hook me up with some weapons instead. So but, he gave uh, you some repro weapons instead? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right before he came down from his room, he actually borrowed the Sharpie from me. He was <laughs> coloring it in. <laughs> he, he had a special saying, marker they use in the Lily Letty factory. He gave it to him. <laughs> he was actually looking for like a Saints fan, and he's like, "You know what? I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a Saints fan right now." What do you um, guys? The uh, Han Solo Huff. Oh man, I've seen him mint on card with the knuckles already rubbed. Yeah, that's a real tough one. Uh, that's another figure I don't have. Yeah, he he oh, always. No. As hand rubs, but they're always really bad. I think that's from people shoving the gun in his hands, and mm. and, and and his feet. They always have so many rubs all over his boots. That's a that's another tough one to get. Mm -hmm. And we we haven't talked about this yet with any figures, but the, he is one that it totally comes to mind. Um, paint application is is tough on certain figures in my experience, and that one, the because the legs are painted on almost all of them. Uh, around the feet, bottom of the feet, the heels, the bottom of the toes. There's just bad paint application that is clearly not always rub. Um, and sometimes the paint, you know, is messy going up onto the uh, the jacket as well. But um, he's just a hard figure to get really nice for for multitude of reasons, right? Yeah, and, you know, he's had some issues with overspray on the face I've seen, like it sprays on the hood. Um, but, yeah, definitely. What about uh, what about some droids? What do you look for in, in like R five? Um, let's see if we get that up there. R five and R two. There's a lot of things that uh, that can happen with these guys. Like I don't know if you can see it, but see how the it's peeling right there. Yeah, from his leg. Yeah, this I've got one right here, John. That is this is like. I hate this because it's just it's it's just natural with playing with the figure, but 
the way that they designed the figure, there's this piece of the leg that rubs right against the bottom of the sticker. Yeah. And it just peels it right up. And yeah, this is a fairly nice sticker, a fairly nice um, color and the paint, is, you know, the, the ink is good. But that's what you got to look for. You got to look for this section right here on both sides where the legs rub. Mm hmm. Right, you've got to look for the silver too. paint on the head. That's a big rub. I only look on one section. I look on the top left, and I see if this red bar filled in. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Now, for both those figures, you check the uh, sticker on the side, and a lot of the times, what people are doing is they're they're actually re-gluing it back down. So not only are you checking to see if it's if the sticker is popping up but you also have to look to see if someone's gluing it back down, which is actually happening a lot more than you would know. Yeah. And you can, you can tell uh, if there's a crease in the sticker Yep. and it looks like the sticker is applied all the way to the cylinder of the body. Yeah. If there's a crease there, that means it's been re-glued for sure. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, I'm, I'm looking for a couple of different things on here. I always check the red. Um, sometimes you're going to get faded, you know, faded uh, red on the top. Um, depending on what happened to the figure. Um, the arms are usually pretty good paint-wise, but the silver rubs off really easily on the head. You want to check and see if it clicks. And, yeah, on all the top corners of the shoulders, it all peels up, so you're looking for the sticker all over the place. He's like the R2 that you mainly want to find the sticker that's white because they turn yellow very easily. He uh, graded mint on card where the figure example was graded in it. And he looks like he just got taken out of a, uh, a urinal. So, <laughs> And that's one thing I've, I've wondered about, too, is like the, the Power of the Force uh, R2s with the pop-up saber. Those stickers always seem to be yellow. But the older ones, you can find a really nice 77, 78 with a really nice sticker, you know, that hasn't been yellowed. Is it? I wonder if it's like the composition of the sticker itself or yeah. what? The glue that they used um, had something to do with it turning yellow on some of them and some of them not. Also, uh, the fact that people don't, you know, when they're when they're playing with these figures, they got dirty dirty hands, and they touch yeah, the, the stickers, oils. and the stickers collect all the dirt and the and the oils and stuff from your fingers. So when you have like a real nice one, you know, I try not to touch the sticker at all. Well, that I, and like, yeah, I don't, don't want to touch it at all. And you may not like want to grade. Those are the ones you actually should. There's like an R2, an R5, you know, something like that. If you have a really clear, really clean sticker on it. Yeah. Uh, they, I mean, they made so many of the the first two R2s that, uh, you know, there's just so many more out there than, than the pop-up. I also do wonder if the pop-up, because of the the playability that it had with it, with the lightsaber, that it was just – they were played with that much more. Not that R2 wasn't, but you can only do so much with the first R2, right? Solid dome. I mean, you could twist his head. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know I've seen some of the power of the force that are still on the card that are stickers are yellow. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. What yeah. what happened was, and I think Brandon kind of touched on it earlier, as Kenner was making these figures and as the years went on, they became cheaper with the materials that they used. So I know that they did change the glue up on some of them, which I'm sure was, you know, cheaper than the one that they used in the beginning. And then I know for the bubbles, uh, starting on the 48 back, they changed the fire, the fire retardant that they used in the plastic, which is why most of the time you'll see the bubbles yellowing on a 48 back and later, like most of the Jedi cards and some of the Empire. And then the earlier cards, you don't see them as yellow. They're usually clear. Because they changed, you know, that fire retardant into plastic to, you know, that they used to make the bubble. It's it's so weird that the different types of plastic that they use, like the plastic that they use for the bubble and the plastic that they use for the figure, <clears throat> how they interact and, you know, cause this chemical imbalance in the figure or the bubble. Yeah. What are you talking about with fire retardant? When they um, when they were making the plastic bubbles, whatever they used in the bubble, like in the plastic, it's like a fire retardant that was in the that, that's in all the bubbles, and they changed it from the forty eight back on, 
So that's why if you look, most of well, all the Jedi's mainly yeah. are all yellow. And then you'll see around like the Empire line, like around like that 45, 48 line, you'll see a lot of them, you know, yellowing. And then in, in the beginning, though, all the 12 backs and 20 backs, do you, do you see any yellow bubbles? Very rarely. Very rarely. Rare. <clears throat> Unless the person stored it like in your attic for 40 years, then it's yellow. But for the most part, they all stayed clear. The, the worst bubble I've ever seen, and I just saw someone post one the other day, is that uh, Power of the Force one-man skimmer, that, that mini rig. Have you guys, oh, yeah. you guys have seen those, right? I mean, the bubble was literally brown. Like, you could not even see what was inside the bubble. Uh, unless you I saw that closely. photo. Yeah, it's really bad. And, and that just so, makes it like, yeah, you have, the, you have the vehicle brand new in the package. That's There's something to that, right? Because it's, it's a more rare piece, but... I I wouldn't even enjoy displaying that. It just looks so so bad with that bubble. Well, also with the bubbles turning yellow and brown, it does something to the plastic where it makes them so much more brittle, which is why those bubbles always tend to break more easily, especially the Power of the Force ones. Those things are breaking like always. And the tri-logos, right? The tri-logos are super thin, super brittle. Well, yeah, the 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 tri logos are just thinner bubbles. They um, crunch. Yeah, but it's different plastic. They use a different bubble, um, so you'll you'll rarely ever see a yellow bubble on a tri logo. It was just the plastic they used was this cheap brittle one, or a tri logo bubble that doesn't have a ding in it, <laughs> because it is paper thin. Yeah. Yep. Guys, how about the uh, the power droid, the gonk droid? This one's pretty straightforward what to look for, but uh, what do you guys – what's the first thing you guys look for with this guy? The feet. Feet. Silver feet. Loose legs, yep. That's it. Yeah, this one, this one is not bad, actually, the one that's holding. The bottoms are not too rubbed. There's a little bit of rubs on the corner, but um, – I'll go 15. <laughs> you gotta you gotta go uh all around right with the feet uh have your fingers on the sticker so i'm gonna go 13 <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pay attention to the red paint on it on both sides you gotta pay attention to the sticker and and a lot of people don't know it's the white label. stripe all the way around is actually a sticker so you gotta check the back because that's where the seam is and a lot of time it peels there that's that's how i first discovered it was a sticker so what's um, that uh what's that like short v I see some of the guys like, oh, it's a short V. It's $30. Yeah, it's pretty um, – it's not real apparent if you don't know what to look for or you're not holding them next to each other. I don't have one here. Uh, but if you put them next to each other, the, 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 the depression that's on the, each side here, um, if you put them next to each other, and if I grab – You have one? No, I don't, I don't have one. I was going to grab just a pen or something. But in any case, right here – where it touches that kind of like black stripe that's above where the sticker is. Yeah. There's there's quite a bit of space there on the short V. It's very noticeable if you put them next to each other. I would say there's, you know, there's at least a it's maybe half as tall. That that V is half as tall on the short V. So will uh, CAS uh, will they grade it as a short V? That's a question for you guys, but I'm pretty sure they'll put that on the label, right? I mean, it's a, it's a well-known variant, I think, right? <sighs> I've if, never if seen I don't think Chris likes that variant. If they dare to write that on the label as a variant, I probably would quit collecting in general because that's <laughs> Well, it's a different it's a totally different mold, isn't that? Isn't that uh worthy of being a variant? It's a different mold? No. No. <laughs> I feel like I've never that, seen it. That is I've never seen CAS. We don't want We don't want to get too far ahead. We can use that variant discussion for another episode, right? Yeah, we're going to have a variant episode for sure. Yeah, I, I actually just looked it up like this week um, because I came across one for sale and it wasn't acknowledged as a short V, but I was like, is that? I, I don't really know. And then I looked it up and it, if you put them side by side, if you see the picture, it's very, very apparent once you look at it. The red bar is an actual real variant though. You're going to tell me somebody putting a little extra uh, ink on a sticker is different than a mold? And I, I read I, – did one of you guys tell me this or did I read it? There were sheets they, – they printed the stickers in sheets for the R5. And they said that they repurposed the sticker from the original R2. And on the R2, 
which I don't have in front of me right, right it's now. It's filled in. It's filled in with the blue. So when they yeah. they 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 recolored it to use for R5, somebody made a mistake and there was let's say there was six on a sheet. There was one out of the five, out of the six in the corner that they forgot to remove the color of the of the square. And so that's why there's so few of them because it's like one out of 12 or whatever was on a sheet. It was just a mistake. So it's rare, is what I you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's going to notice. <laughs> yeah, here. I like so no, no one's going to care 45 years later. So for anybody that's anybody that's uh, not not sure what we're talking about here, this blue square right here is normal on R two, but on R five it's 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 clear. But somewhere on this the sticker sheet when they were making they were switching it over to red, they left that square filled in on one out of however many were on the sheet twelve fifteen whatever. So that's why it's rare. Brand, you're a really picky collector and you like nice stuff. What's a really hard figure? You know that take you a while to find. Um, Bespin guards have always been hard for me. Uh, Did you see the ones couple... I listed? I sent the CAS and they got eighties. Oh really? Yeah, I saw it's really really hard. You listed the, the what you got back, um, but I, I didn't see what the I didn't see the details on it. Yeah, uh, it's hard to find those. But I went a long search to find some with, you know, nice hands, nice gold, uh, nice, you know, uh, collars, the red collars. Um, and then that's the one that, that drove me up the wall because, you know, I'll buy a couple from eBay or I'll buy some from a Facebook group and they look really nice in the pictures. And then you get it in and you're like, oh, I didn't see that. and I didn't see that um hand rubs nose rubs on on the black guard they're just hard to hard to find I'm, you know um perfect so i went on a long search for those that, that's one of the figures where i told myself i'm not buying any more online i will have to go in person and look and use my my giant flashlight <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's so my the way I collect certain figures for condition is that there's only uh, a handful of figures that I won't buy uh, online because I'm looking for ones that are the best and I'm just tired of buying some that are just not the quality that I like. So I do go in person searching for those figures and if I find a nice one, I'll buy it. Is this what you do, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> that brings back memories of uh, Nashville. <laughs> hey, it worked. <laughs> we talked so about this Nashville, once. I found a nice white one and a nice black one, and I bought them both. We talked about the the gold on um, on Bespin Leia before, and it, to me, it's kind of the same thing because I'm sure it's probably the same paint, right? And uh, I've seen them also mint on card where a, a lot of, if not all, the gold is missing. So to me, it's got to be the paint. It's not just also the, I mean, the played with figures are going to have rub, obviously. But the gold, I've seen it missing inside the bubble. So I think it's a chemical thing where the it's just deteriorated over time. And we've seen the Bespin Leia where the gold has turned to black or, or dark uh, on the plastic, right? Yeah, I've definitely. Yeah, she's seen she's tough. That's a tough one to find with nice gold, nice hands, nice hair, nice eyebrows. You know, and then on top of it, you're one. you're battling with like with the Leias and the Lukes and the um, Storm. I mean, those are the two that come into mind. The the paint application on the face, the eyes, the eyebrows. You're already looking for a version that has a nice application because everyone's slightly different. And then you're fighting with paint rubs. It makes it even harder. I actually have a uh, Luke double telescoping uh, figure that he got graded in 85, but his eyebrow is on his hair. <laughs> it's completely perfect, but his eyebrow is actually not on his face. It's on his hair. And it took me like a year to notice that. And I, I, I never picked it up on you know, Like I, I didn't notice it. Did he go get his uh, eyebrows done with Raul? <laughs> Chris, you couldn't take you couldn't just take the 
the telescope and saber out, put them with a different Luke that was the same uh, COO style on it. it. It was too late already. I, I already sent it in. It came back. Yeah. Would you ever? Would you ever break that open? What? Because what is it? It's a three line that you need for that, or a two line? I don't know. Um, there's there's people you need after that. I I think it's either a two line or a three line. I believe. If you ever came across one that was just gorgeous, would you break that open and and possibly switch the saber and get it regraded? Maybe because I you know I looked at this one just the other day. I had someone reach out to me um, about his Luke Farm Boys. He wanted to grade one actually with this exact same topic that we're talking about. So, you know, I, I was looking them over and I told him, I was like, you know, they look about an 80, 80 plus maybe tops. So I took mine out for a comparison and, you know, I was this, mine is absolutely perfect. It's just that damn eyebrow is on his head. <laughs> <laughs> Does he look like Dwayne Johnson given the eyebrow? <laughs> the eyebrow. I joke about it because we, you know, when we talk to people, we get to know whose figures, you know, whose focus figures are whose. And uh, I know who's always hunting for farm boy Luke. So um, what about Charles? What about you? What is a figure that's tough for you to find uh, fairly nice with no paint rubs? What are the things that you look for with that figure? Lobot. <laughs> Your mic's off. You're muted. Sorry. <laughs> I don't have um I don't have a Bosque. I don't have a, a Leia Bespin. I don't have the white Bespin guard. Um, just because you haven't found the right one yet, or what? Yep, I just can't find them. Same as Brandon. I'll look at it online and I get it in, and it's just not, you know, <laughs> what I thought it was. Now, are you looking to have it? graded in the end or loose or what and if, if if you are looking for graded are you keeping your eyes out for a graded one as well does that make it easier no, well i actually grade all mine but i want to actually find the figure and send it in myself you know i'm looking for that like 90 range i want it like close to perfect like right off the bubble so that's that's interesting to me so that that makes me think is there something for you with going through that process, finding your own figure, sending it in, you know, with your account, with CAS, getting it graded, knowing that you found that and it was your figure that, that you sent in and now you have it cased. Yeah, yeah. I think I have probably, I don't know, I would say like 75 plus like graded and I, I purchased maybe two or three that were already graded. All the rest I did myself. How about you, John? What do you look for? Oh, what are you still looking for? What am I still looking for? Um, I think in my personal collection, I've got <laughs> all the ones that I want in the condition that they're in. Um, and I'm not really interested in grading stuff. Um, I do have, a, like I said, I have a couple of graded, graded things just because it's like with the, with the B-Wing pilot, just to, just to have uh, a variety of items and stuff but but you know um i don't have any one item that i'm looking for that's that's perfect perfect i mean i may eventually start switching some stuff out of my collection just to find a better one but but right now i'm pretty satisfied with with what i have but but like all we've talked about tonight you know those are the those are definitely the the things that that we all look for and that, that I'm looking for in like the perfect figure, but I haven't really set out on a hunt for the perfect replacements for, for my figures, my loose collection yet. It's so one thing we can ask the viewers, you know, post in the comments, what you guys are finding for figures and what you guys find, uh, troubling with the, the hunt that you've been looking for for certain figures and the condition you've been looking for you know what are some of your figures that you like to collect and what's the condition that you like to look for or what are those those things that that you also notice about certain figures that are hard to get yeah definitely yeah just name a figure that you're looking for and ask us what to look for particularly in that figure and we can pretty much tell you exactly what to look for on each figure yeah, so so John, I got this uh, this Y wing today, and 
I didn't get it today. It's been sitting in a box, but I finally opened it for the first time um, and kind of treated myself to uh, enjoying this today with the kids. And it was really, uh, it was a fun moment because this was one of my favorite, favorite toys as a kid. And mm -hmm. I haven't had one now. Geez, I must have been the last time I possessed one was 11 or 12 years old, something like that. So now here we are 30 years later and it's um, it's in pretty nice shape. It's complete. Uh, the landing gear works. It's, whoa, the sounds work. Oh, God. The gun is not working. I think that the motor for the gun, it might need a little jump with the nine volt, that little nine volt trick. Yeah. You connect the wires up and see if you can jump the motor. Um, yeah. But the sounds work. My son was loving that. And uh, yeah, and it's got the bomb underneath, which is always missing or missing a part, right? Right. Because um, that bomb comes in two pieces, I think, right? It does. It does. Yeah, it comes in two pieces. A lot of times the back piece is missing. Sorry, I don't know if I'm on the screen here. Um, the back piece is missing a lot of the times. Yeah, so I bought this from another live seller uh, on one of the groups. And uh, just for whatever reason, it's been sitting on my table and I just hadn't opened it yet. And I got it out today and was pleasantly surprised all over again. It's got a lot of the pretty much all the decals as far as I know. Uh, the paint on it is nice. So we're talking about condition, right? It, it, it matters with vehicles and mini rigs and play sets as well. Um, so, you know, you're going to be looking to make sure it has all the pieces, right? So that it's 100% complete. You're going to be looking to see if any tabs are broken. That's a real big thing. So you've got tabs like this on the pieces that open up and snap together. Um, there's also... A lot of extra pieces where a you know a, a corner could be broken off or a flap, um, and then of course you want to see if the sounds work and if the, the mechanism works and the landing gear works. Um, but those are the things that you're mainly going to be looking for. It does sometimes take a little bit of research to find out what pieces it's supposed to have. Right? It might be missing a really small piece that you don't realize is even supposed to be there. Something like uh, you know the Dagobah playset, you may not realize it's got these many pieces, these little the little boxes, or the Hoth playset, you may not realize, you know, it's got those pieces that collapse, right? Right, and then like the cylinder on the Dagobah playset, the cylinder is always missing. Right, right. The the, the, the levitation cylinder, right? It's yeah. it's always missing, and then you know you, you know you can't make the 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 action happen with R two D two. But yeah, this was really enjoyable for me to break out this uh, today, this weekend. I was sitting watching football for the first time um, for the opening of the season, and uh, this was sitting next to me all day. So really cool. Super happy to add this to my uh, vehicle collection, and my kids were loving it. And uh, so that's that's a, that gives you some ideas of what to look for. You want to look for 100% complete, you know, with all the pieces and parts, and, and you can always use the resources of the Star Wars groups, or of course you can just Google and look up uh, pictures and, and get the instructions and things like that. Um, but uh, there's also a lot of tricks with getting things fixed as well. If there's any of the mechanisms are not working. Um, you also, you know, another thing I want to point out is if when you're looking at it the first time or when you're asking about it, if it's an online sale, you do want to ask about the battery compartment too. Uh, a big sign is if you open the battery compartment and there's any green in there, any corrosion, uh, you know, that's a pretty bad sign that you're probably not going to be able to fix the motor, uh, the mechanism, the electronics, the wires, and get it to work again. So, so that's it. That's my new, uh, my new Y-Wing. Um, anything else today, John? I think that's it. All right. Well, I'm going to ask everybody to, as always, like and subscribe this to the, li like the video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we have new episodes that come out every Sunday night. Uh, so please uh, subscribe and that'll uh, let us know that we have some followers looking for more content and please make some comments as well and let us know what you like about the episode, what you might be looking for in future episodes, what we could uh, make a fun topic out of. And we're going to have some really exciting special guests coming up soon uh, that we're planning. So please stay tuned, subscribe, and you'll be notified when there's new episodes and you can watch live every Sunday night with other, other people. John, I'm going to throw it over to you. Uh, thanks very much for a great Sunday evening once again, and thanks to the rest of the guys, Chris, Brandon, Charles. And uh, it was fun as always. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, next time, uh, please don't wear the Saints gear. I'm kidding. No. But uh, anyway, again, like uh, Shane was saying, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Uh, 
comment about episodes that you want to see, uh, topics that you want to talk about. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.